Uh, oil change on a farm wall cub is a task that anybody can accomplish inside their garage or their barn. It's very simple and in this tutorial I'll show you all the steps that you'll need to do. To start with, you need a one and an eighth inch wrench for the drain plug that's located right here at the bottom of the tractor. That will loosen up, and as it loosens, the oil will come out. I've got a clean, recycled bucket here ready to go. It's going to catch the oil as it comes. That long thread's on there, but there it comes, just like that. I'm going to set my drain plug down here aside because I'm going to need to reuse it. I am following the steps that are outlined in my book here, Farm All Cub Encyclopedia. You can see that um, chapter seven is all repairs and maintenance pertaining to the cub tractor. And there's a picture with a short description for every single step in the process for every type of repair and maintenance that's outlined in the book. So I just did step number one, which was to remove the drain plug. Step number two here is to take the bolt off of the filter casing, which is located right up here. This one you'll need a three quarter inch wrench for. Might be a little bit tight, but you can loosen it up. I did go ahead and remove the ground battery cable on my tractor. The, um, this is hot right here, and if my wrench touched that, it would arc, and I don't wanna have any accidents. So you could do the same. There's a really long bolt that goes all the way through the filter here. So here's the bolt that I removed, and then there's the top and it has a filter behind it. My filter came off super easy, but every once in a while these will be um, kind of caked on, and you'll want to make sure that you remove all of that uh, gasket right there out of the way so that when you put your new gasket on, you get a really good seal. You can purchase a new filter and gasket on my website, which is farmtrackedrepair.com, and when you buy the filter, it comes with the gasket. The next thing you'll want to do is pull the filter out and that just lifts right out. Some filters will have a little piece of wire on the top that will help you lift out, which you can use a screwdriver for, or other ones will just be placed in there like this one is, and it just pulls right out. I'm gonna make sure that's mostly dripped out, and then I'll set that aside. Let me dry off my hands here. So now I'm letting the rest of my oil drain out, and then I'll be ready for the new filter. So I just accomplished steps number two and three in the book there, which was to pull the filter out. The next thing I want to do is put my new filter in and replace the gasket on the cover. So I have my new gasket here behind me, which I'm just going to reach. This is directional, and you put it in just the way that you think it is with the words going up like that. So I am going to drop this in here, and it kind of will just rest in the middle there. Then I have my bolt and I set my cap down, here we go. I set my cap down here. Here's my new filter, or gasket, I'm sorry. Called that the wrong thing. Here's my bolt, which I'm just gonna line up through here. And then I drop that bolt down the center of my filter in there. Again, I'm making sure that, that gasket is placed there and it's not crushed. And then I'm gonna move the bolt around at the bottom. There's a groove that it's gotta drop down into and you'll feel it. You just gotta move that bolt around, kind of pick it up and set it down a couple times until you get it right in the groove. You'll feel that it's in the groove and then you can tighten it up. Now this bolt is hollow, so you want to make sure that you don't over tighten it and snap it off. I'd recommend just using one hand on that wrench. I'm tightening up by hand and then I'll use my wrench again. I like to use a short wrench to fit in here so that I can get a little bit more movement but if you don't have a short wrench, you can use a long wrench. It'll just take you a little bit longer to get that done. I'm gonna tighten this up all the way. And then I'll go ahead and replace my drain plug here in the bottom once that's finished draining. On the other side of the tractor is the air cleaner right here. This is an oil bath system, so we're gonna clean that out while we're changing the oil. I am following steps number nine and 10 here. There's a bale at the bottom, and um, when you take the bale off, there are some sharp parts around here, so just be careful that you don't press too hard with your bale and cut your hand while you're removing the bale. So that just comes off the bottom, and then the bowl drops down. This does have oil in it, so I'm careful not to spill it. You can see the oil inside there. I'm gonna go ahead and dump it right here in my bucket. 
And then I'm going to spray it with some carburetor cleaner and a rag to get it really cleaned out. So I'm going to put my safety glasses on here. I got this in my eyes once and I learned my lesson to always wear safety glasses for forevermore. So I'm going to spray this out. Okay, all cleaned. And I'm just dumping the waste right in the bucket here. You can see that? I'm going to try to wipe it out with a rag so this is really clean. This looks a lot better. Okay, you can see this groove here in the bowl. That is the fill mark. So I'm going to get my new oil here and fill it up to that mark. I am using 15 weight 40 oil here. You can see this is what I like to use in my antique tractors like this Cub and many other models. An original manual would recommend like a straight 30 weight oil, which I have here, which I can show you. This would be a straight 30 weight. If that's your preference, go for it. However, I always use 1540. It's a modern equivalent, and um, I want to put the best oil that I can in my tractor. So that is 1540 for me, but I'm not the oil police, so you can do whatever you please. I have this filled up with oil up to that groove, and now I'm ready to just slide it back in here. So I turn that bale towards me first to start. Then I press it up there where it needs to be, and I push that bale back. It's tight, and it should be tight because it's got to hold that in place. And then it just kind of snaps in there, and you can see that that is snug and secure. At this point, I'm ready to add more oil. So I add it right here where I take the dipstick out. Let me get my rag because it might, nope, it's not drippy. So this takes a scant three quarts of oil. I'm going to pour that in, and then we'll be good to go. You may be wondering how often should I change the oil on my tractor, Rachel? I would say probably about every 100 hours, even though that's kind of hard to keep track of because there's no hour meter on a cub, but you can kind of gauge that. If your cub doesn't get that much use, maybe it's just a show tractor, or does really light chores around your home or farm, then you could change it once a season. Just want to make sure that that oil is fresh and clean in your tractor. I'm going to finish pouring this up in here and then we're going to start the tractor up. My tractor is running and shows really good oil pressure on the gauge. You can see the needle is standing all the way up. Another thing that you want to check when it's running is to make sure that it's not leaking up where the top of the canister is for the oil filter. Make sure that that's tight and there's no leaks there. I pulled out my dipstick and could see that the oil was up into the fill mark. So with those checks, my oil change is complete. If you have a cub tractor and you want to do maintenance on it, my YouTube channel is an excellent resource for you. I have a lot of videos on the cub, as well as this book, Farmo Cub Encyclopedia. It has the repair and maintenance section, which I talked about, but it also shows a lot of history of the Farmall Cub model, information about the other implements that were available. Here's some information on demonstrator cubs. Uh, just loaded with information and it's all about the cub tractor. Even if you don't own a cub, this would still be an interesting read for you if you like antique tractors. You can purchase this book on my website, farmtractorrepair.com. You can also purchase your oil filter, uh, other parts for your cub if you want to rebuild your carburetor or do a valve uh, replacement. All those parts are available on my site, farmtractorrepair.com. So check out my site and also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos in the future.